great desert in the great American Southwest. I'm Art Bell. Slamming into your radio like a supercharged nanoparticle of unobtainium. My name is George Knapp. I'm Richard Serrett. This is Connie Willis. I'm George Norrie. Welcome to Coast to Coast AM. It's great to be here. Welcome to Coast to Coast PM, the number one unofficial Coast to Coast AM podcast. We are two brothers who analyze the world's largest overnight paranormal radio show, Coast to Coast AM. My name is Paul, and I'm the guy that listens to this inexplicable radio show here with my brother. Hey, it's Chris. I'm the Bob Woodward to your Carl Bernstein, but we haven't taken down an American president yet. We have not. That's a dark one. That's a dark one, Chris. <laughs> and I want to put the emphasis on yet. <laughs> don't, don't put emphasis on that at all. <laughs> Dear God. <laughs> well, Chris, we are back for another episode, and this is going to be Hail Bop Heaven's Gate part two is art bell responsible for the mass suicide of the heaven's gate cult exactly that is what we are covering if you have not listened to part one definitely go check that out uh where we cover the very first coverage of art bell's hail bop companion stories and today's episode is going to be about two episodes one from november 28th 1996 where our good friend Courtney Brown from Emory University, along with his employee Prudence Calabrese, come on to talk about the Hale Bop Companion and new evidence that they found since they had just spoken to Art two weeks prior on our last episode, along with Whitley Strieber. Uh, Whitley Strieber, who wrote the book Communion about his real, uh, allegedly real, I should say, alien abduction stories. Whitley was also very heavily involved in the Hale Bop Companion uh, ET storyline. And let's also remind everyone that Professor Brown is a professor of political science and runs a remote viewing institute. Which I'm very confused how he got into remote viewing, honestly. Like, if we had him on on the podcast, I would definitely ask the George Norrie, how'd you get into this? How do you get into this? I really want to know how he got into this. And he doesn't explain it? No, he never explains it, really. Uh, Yeah, I'm just the remote viewing. I'm just really into remote viewing. Yeah, I'm always been. It's just my thing. Yeah. Uh, the second episode we'll be covering today is December 6th, 1996, where Whitley Schreiber and Chuck Schrammick, the amateur astronomer, come back on. So, Chris, before we get to that, we got to go check in with Tim Banal at the Coast to Coast AM blog. Tim time. So today's article, Pentagon UAP office collects hundreds of UFO reports, finds no evidence of aliens yet. Keeping keeping it with the alien theme this time. I love it. I figured, you know, if we're going UFO behind Hale Bop, we might as well do UAP stories. Right. The Department of Defense provided an update on their new office tasked with investigating unidentified aerial phenomenon and said that although the group has collected a bevy of reports to date, there is no indication that the phenomenon as seen by military pilots is alien in nature. I will say it is kind of interesting that a lot of this starts because of congressional questions like are the you know calling up the military and being like hey i'm getting a lot of like ufo reports like do we need to be worried about this is this a national security risk it reminds me a lot of the guy who asks about the nuclear war that took place on the moon to his <laughs> congressman and the congressman's like you know, I, I don't know anything about that. Let me ask. Yeah, the Battle of the Harvest Moon. The Battle of the Harvest Moon. <laughs> That's right. Where, where Russians bombed our secret moon base. Yeah, where Russians <laughs> nuked the secret U.S. military base. Yeah, it's a little so similar. Anyways, it's just a nice example of the government still working in a really yeah. weird way. We were lamenting the fact that more of this stuff doesn't happen, but this is a great example of when it does happen. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice. Yeah. So the fresh insights from the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office, or ARO, which was a great name, which was formed back in July out of a previous effort launched in November of 21, came by way of a press conference this past Friday. At the gathering, Office Director Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick explained that they have, quote, established mechanisms to ensure that we can begin to receive current reports and that they now have significantly more cases to look at. Okay. All right. 
when pressed as to how many reports have been collected, Kirkpatrick, I am having a really hard time saying his name. Kirkpatrick. Kirkpatrick. You're, you're, you're trying to put too much emphasis on all the T's. <laughs> that second T just kind of slide past it. Kirkpatrick. Kirkpatrick. Seem reticent to provide a precise number, though noted that it was, quote, several hundreds more than the Pentagon cited in their 2021 UAP report. Of course, the matter of most on everyone's mind is the origins of these unusual objects and the possibility that they could be coming from out of this world. To that end, when asked if among the sea of cases they have collected, there is any indication that any of these anomalies is a space alien, the officials overseeing Arrow were rather definitive in their response, with Ronald Moultrie, the Undersecretary for Defense for Intelligence and Security, saying, at this time, the answer is no, we have nothing. Love that answer, dude. Love that answer. And this is Paul... Can I be 100% honest with you? I believe I've stated this before, but how much Congress and the military and I imagine the military industrial complex is now involved in UAPs makes me think that it's some kind of limited hangout slash like weird cover up and that most of this is just U.S technology that they don't want to get out and so we yeah. have to make this whole dog and pony show these unidentified aerial phenomenon we have no idea what it is you know is it a a, a national security risk and stuff and it's like no it's just it's just u.s military technology and we've you know, pooped the bag too many times that now it's a big problem yeah, everyone kept bringing it up, so they have to say something. Well, yeah, that does right. go in line with the fact that they're no longer releasing footage of UAPs because they right. said it's a national security risk. Right, right, exactly. So, so that's, that's like, I mean, that's that's what I'm thinking is happening right now. Is this? They, it's just them messing with the the society at large, right? This is what I've talked about before. Like these people know how to do this stuff. You don't think that they know how to traject society in weird ways and how to you know kind of make these like mass cover-ups and stuff because dude the alien people are going nuts about this stuff well and, and i many... just want to sit down and talk to them and be like y'all like you're kind of getting led a little bit they're pulling you by the nose ring mm-hmm yeah, and I think many would say that that is the most likely possibility that uh, a lot of the UAPs that are seen are military technology that we are not yet aware of. And I love them to to death, but like Tom DeLonge is a useful idiot, sweet, and he sweet, has a he he yes the yes thank you this the singer from Blink One Eighty Two how who has now become one of the major leakers of military documentation. And it's like, dude, this is classic. This is classic. The CIA loves celebrity, dude. They love celebrity. They are all awed by celebrity for whatever reason. They love using celebs. They love using famous people. That's true. Well, Chris, we got an episode to get to. Uh, but before that, a little bit of housekeeping. Housekeeping. Uh, we have an email address. Send your thoughts and episode requests to c 2 cpmpod at gmail.com. If you like the show, drop us five stars on Apple Podcasts or Spotify and smash that subscribe button. We drop every Thursday and that'll make sure you never miss an episode. And thank you to everyone that has told friends about us. We don't advertise or really do anything to promote the podcast. So it is super awesome how many people listen and it's all because of y'all sharing the tapes. So please keep that up. Thank you guys for listening. And always thank you so much for sharing with your friends. We really appreciate it. And uh, if you can just take 30 seconds to give us that five stars on Apple or Spotify, I w we would love you forever. Yeah, it's a really great way to help us out because that boosts us on the algorithm when we get more five-star ratings. So please go ahead take, and do that if you can. Take a screenshot of it, send it to us, and we'll give you a shout out. There you go. There you go, man. I love it. Email will be in the, the show notes, as always. As always. Well, to the episode, this is November 28th, 1996, with our good friend Courtney Brown, Prudence Calabrese, and Whitley Strieber. And so what's the what how what's the time span between episode one with Courtney first going on and this episode? This is almost exactly two weeks later. Two weeks. So mm -hmm. Art's like, I gotta get this guy back on. Well, there's a reason why he's back on. Okay. So let's get to Art Bell's intro because uh he's 
really not underselling this, right? Okay. You can you'll all hear right. in this intro, he's going all in. America north to the pole and worldwide on the internet. This is Coast to Coast AF. Good evening. The program tonight is going to contain news which will be very disturbing to some people. The content concerns news of first contact. First contact with unknown life forms or entities. If you are disturbed by this sort of material, please turn your radio off now or tune to a different station. If you are a parent, please exercise your parental responsibility. What follows is, to the best of our knowledge, real and not a drama. We've made first contact, Chris. This is insane, dude. He went full on, full on salesman. Yeah, he went for it. He's like, I am getting ratings right now. Yeah, that's used car salesman level of, of like trying to get the sale. Yeah. And like this what, is where what person is going to turn that off after that. Yeah. This is where things start to go awry, in my opinion. Right. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, he's overselling now. Well, the thing is, from his perspective and the information they are about to show on the program, he is not overselling because they're really? about to say that we've made first contact. Oh, wow. Yep. So we're going to kick things off because last episode, uh, we talked about the remote viewing that Courtney Brown's group did at the Farsight Institute and what they were seeing, right? This episode, we are saying that we now have right. independent confirmation that that remote viewing was accurate. We then started our normal process as an educational institute, as a research yeah. institute, to verify what we got. So we called around and contacted some astronomers that were in the Big Ten, top ten universities, to get as much verifying information as we could. Of course. Some were courageous, and one in particular allowed us to, uh, 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 shared with us, in confidence, information that allowed us to confirm what our remote viewing was. Basically, it was that the object that was near uh, the comet was indeed photographed by this astronomer's team, that the, that the object had been photographed numerous times. It moves about. It is huge. So we so have confirmation from an outside source that this is some kind of crap. From a top 10 astronomer, dude. Okay. All right. Top 10, but not going to say who, but it's a top 10 university astronomer who has a whole team on this. Yeah, they got a whole team. And they all know about it, and right. everyone's afraid to speak up pretty much. Okay. Yes. But it is validated. All of the remote viewing stuff, and that's what Courtney talks about, too, is that whenever you do remote, remote viewing, you want to make sure that you can corroborate what you're seeing so that you right. can have someone who says, like, no, this is accurate. And they found someone that can. Uh, and he's a he's a top dog in astronomy. Yeah. OK, cool. I'm glad I'm glad that was so easy to get that cooperation. Super easy, apparently. Yeah. Not hard at all. You know, everything everything you said on arts coast to coast. Totally true. Completely accurate. That's what's so funny about this is that yeah. there was just someone that was like, oh, yeah, all of those things are real. Like yeah, point after point actually is real. You're on the money. <laughs> Once again, 100 percent accuracy rate, Chris. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the other thing that this professor did was send them the film rolls of these pictures that he took. Let's stop there for a second and just go over that uh, because it's pretty important. You have found an astronomer. Mm -hmm. uh, whose name we're not giving out right now, and we'll explain why, at a, a top 10 university. That's right. Who has taken roughly, uh, Doctor, how many images of Hellbop and its companion? Well, he shared with us uh, a number of roles of film of these images, uh, of which uh, the, we, found, we found five to be really spectacular and Internet quality, that type of stuff. Okay, this is not a... Uh, Amateur. This no. is a, a, this is a guy who is fully the best of the best. Uh, uh, not only a professional, but someone with an international reputation. I'm, I'm telling you, 
We got rolls of photos. <laughs> rolls. Well, and they sent Art one of the best photos, too. So Art does have a copy of what they're talking about. Do we get to see that copy? Uh, I can show you what the picture looks like that was sent to Art. Oh, dude, I got to see it. This is the photograph that was sent to Art. So it's a little hard to see, but you can see here there's hail Bop. And then this thing right here is a companion. So once again, it's a little bright dot with another little bright dot next to it. Okay. All right. So that's the, that's, that's the, the huge evidence we have. That's the evidence. Okay. Which here's the thing. That's what the pictures look like from telescopes. So right. big deal. Very big deal. Yeah. There is something there behind Hale Bob, according to this image. Right. But big question, Chris. Art has the picture. Courtney has the picture. Why aren't they posting the picture online? Yes. I have in my hand some of those photographs right now of the companion to Hale Bob. And we'll be talking uh, with Prudence Calabrese uh, shortly about these. But I've got them in my hand. Now, the question would be, why are we not posting these tonight on the Internet? Why are we not putting them up? It's very clear. Our original hope was to be able to put them up on the Internet tonight. But the, the photographs are of such quality because they were taken with professional equipment at a major university that it would become instantly aware of not only where the photographs were taken, but under whose direction. What a yeah. great line. That's so good. We can't post the pictures because that'll be fingerprints on who leaked it to us. And here's the thing, Chris, we're going to find out later. Accurate statement. Apparently, these folks can easily pinpoint which photographs were taken from their telescopes. I think I, I that's not shocking to me at all. Yeah. I imagine that all these telescopes had their own little quirks and, and things that, that astronomers who are well-versed in this world would would know pretty immediately you know little markers and and quality and stuff like that that they could pinpoint like oh that was definitely done by a university and then you kind of look well who is who what university was doing what and stuff and then they've already said it's a top 10 university so that narrows it down already this guy is screwed Right. If if what they're saying is true about this government cover up. Yeah. Immediately added, because the other thing, too, is that if you're taking pictures of hail Bob, it's in a very specific region of the sky. You have to be in a specific area of the Earth to take right. that kind of picture at right. that time of night. Right. Like there are so many pieces here that will immediately out the location that this was taken. Right. Oh, my gosh, dude. That's so good. Doing a little detective work, astronomy style. Yeah, exactly. So the, the thing that Courtney keeps coming back to is we have this evidence. We're in contact with the astronomer, but it is his choice to come forward. We can't do it for him. Uh, this, 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 the, the time that that person needs in order to make this decision. All right. And let me say, Art, you know, it's actually possible. It's absolutely possible that the person may decide. I don't think the person is going to. The person feels deeply committed, uh, as he has communicated with us, that he must come forward with this. But it is possible that something could happen, and he would say, this is just not something I want to do. It's just too too big a thing. Or something. He, this is his choice, but that's why we must understand we live in a free will universe. What Courtney's doing here is already laying the foundation for the fact that this astronomer may never come forward. Right. I'm also curious, so does Art know who the astronomer is? Art does not know who the astronomer is. He Art eventually... doesn't know either. Yeah, he eventually thinks that he knows the university, but he does not know the name of the astronomer. Okay, okay. So yeah. really the only person who has any contact with this university astronomer that shared the picture is Courtney. Courtney Brown and Prudence Calabrese, the uh, employee of his that's going to be on here in just a little bit. But his employee. Yeah. Okay. The Farsight Institute are the only people who know anything about the identity of this guy. Right. And here is Art's biggest screw up because he's having this guy on the air claiming that we are making first contact with aliens based on the word of a man who he does not know. He right. does not know Courtney Brown. He does not have a pre-existing relationship with Courtney Brown. He's just some dude who runs the Farsight Institute. 
who Art is just taking his word for it that this is all real. This is all legit. I, but I mean, I can see some of where Art is coming from, right? I mean, this guy is a professor at an, an, an esteemed university. Emory University, especially in the South, is considered a top school. Their medical school is incredible. Now, I can't say how good their political science program is, but again, it's 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 a it's a well respected university. Mm -hmm. You know, this isn't like some podunk, no nothing university. This is a major research university that this guy is a tenured professor of. He has the Farsight Institute, which we can say whatever we want about remote viewing, but in arts world, that would be a pretty big deal. And not just that, but now you got this, you know, amateur astronomer who is sending pictures, which again, none of us are experts at astronomy. It looks like there is genuinely something following the hail bot comet on those pictures. Mm -hmm. And then you add in just like some basic cooperation and a conspiracy. I mean, I can, I, I, I can see where art is starting to get very excited about this. And like yeah, we you, said, this guy has pretty good lore. Yeah. And when you fold in Chuck Stramick too, who's an amateur who says it's there. And then you have uh, Courtney Brown saying he's talking to some guy who's a big dog in the astronomy community who also is saying it's there. And here's the other thing on our next clip. Apparently all the astronomers are talking about this. They all know it's there. According to and Courtney Brown. Everyone's talking about it. You're there's, saying this is generally uh, at, at the top of the heap in astronomy. Well, not this, necessarily the top of the heap, but people are there. The, the, the very best astronomers in the nation and perhaps in the world are talking about it and they're sharing their information. That, is, a, that, is, that is the top of the heap, doctor. Uh, that is the top of the heap, yes. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, and they are, in fact, not going to be able this story will have to break eventually. They're not going to be able to keep it. Uh, but, you know, everybody is looking at themselves and saying, I mean, we even know from the astronomer that we've been dealing with, we've been actually dealing with calling a few others, but we've been knowing just from him that even he's saying that he's getting information sent to him from others. They're putting this together and they're talking amongst themselves. So we, we truly have a global conspiracy. Yeah, apparently. Apparently. Uh, what is following the Hale-Bach comment? Because from what Courtney is saying, it sounds like astronomers are now catching this on their telescope, but everyone's too nervous to come forward and say it. Right. But eventually someone's going to have the, the gumption to come out and say, yep, this is something that's following hale Bob. Yep, it's artificial. And he thinks that he has the guy, but he's also hedging. He's, he's saying that this guy is going to come out within the next week and do a press conference, but maybe he won't. It's his decision. It's up to him, but I think he will, but maybe he won't. We don't really know what he's going to do. Right, right. Well, this is classic, right? This is, mm -hmm. this is like Seventh-day Adventists. Everyone's in the field to, to be raptured up into heaven and then the prophet comes up and says, hey, everyone, we, we were such good Christians that God has spared the whole world yeah. for at least another couple months. This is like a classic technique of swindlers. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think the biggest issue is him saying that all astronomers are in on it. But I mean, it, it is a good way of like getting people to buy in on what's happening, right? right. And it's also, once again verified everything that the farsight institute has done which is why right. that that right. that he was so accurate with his right, remote right. viewing it's it's amazing all the information that this one guy has been giving a hundred percent confirms everything he said that he saw which i mean a hundred percent accuracy right chris on remote viewing you're you're done right. correctly so it you're makes right. sense you're right it's the scientific story paul it's scientific, it's scientific. <laughs> srv scientific remote viewing yes it's all right science. so what so what's up with this professor, right? What's what's he saying? What's going on? Um, he's a very brave and courageous person to have um, come forward, at least to us at this point, with this information. How did that occur? Did you go to him? Did he come to you? Uh, can you tell us how the contact occurred? What we did after we did the hale -Bopp remote viewing sessions, we started calling around um, all the astrophysicists and astronomers that we had some personal contact with. Mm -hmm. And... Um, we happened to run across 
this particular person. And he said, well, yes, there are some um, observed anomalies. And then later, that same week, he called us back and said, I have some photographs that show another object traveling with this comet. So, Paul, that's pretty interesting that the remote viewing world has such close contact with the astrophysics world. You know, you wouldn't expect that. You really wouldn't. Um, no. But apparently, I, deep ties. We just called all the astronomers <laughs> and astrophysicists we knew to see if anyone can confirm that there is an alien spaceship behind hail bop comment that our remote viewer saw i just love the image of prudence and courtney just like pulling out the old rolodex and just dialing and just being like hey yeah. is, is there a spaceship behind hail bop yeah. <laughs> just call it harvard dr smith we we're seeing a spaceship behind hail bop oh, what you got for a- us and then i just love that the one astronomer is just like you guys are 100 percent right <laughs> you nailed it and I got pictures to prove it. And what this reminds me of, too, is the old Oumuamua. Well, not old. It was just, you know, not that long ago. Not but just the, a couple of years ago, right? Yeah, the intergalactic. I, I don't even Was it a comet, technically? What was it? Yeah, I, I don't know if it was an asteroid or I think it was an asteroid, technically, because okay. I believe asteroid designates giant rock and okay. comet is mostly ice. Well, the, the intergalactic object that was flying at really high speed, there was one guy who came out and said that it was an alien probe. Yeah, he was like was a awesome. Harvard professor, right? Yeah, he was a Harvard professor that said that the only thing that would cause that is if you had solar sails that right. were pushing this object faster, which would have to be artificial in origin. Uh, and the community of astrology did blow up about it. But also, I think that guy's also fine. Well, right? not astrology, astronomy. Oh, sorry, astronomy. <laughs> Very the real one. the real one paul not the real the one, fake the real one. one. <laughs> yeah, the real so one. like i don't know I, this that guy came out when there was really no evidence to support it so i think if someone had a picture of something trailing hail bob there would be someone that would come out and say, paul was this uh harvard professor who talked about a mo a mua mua being an alien spacecraft was he a professor of political science i don't believe so i think it was <laughs> uh actually astronomy yeah, what he studied. I think you're right. I'm pretty sure he, he was uh <laughs> he was within his subject matter at least. Yeah. So in in Prudence in, in Courtney's opinion, you know, what is in this picture that was shared? Now there is one object that is right behind Hale Bob, which is not a star, and it's not on any star chart. So if someone were to take this photograph and match it up with any of the catalogs or computer programs that generate a picture of the sky at that particular time, um, you would not find this object. It is very bright. It is as bright as the comet. Yes. And it is as large as the comet and appears to be slightly larger in this particular photograph. Immediately behind uh, Hale Bob. Immediately. In fact, uh, the images appear to almost mesh. Exactly. And if you look closely, you'll notice that this object is emitting light and that the light actually covers some of hail so it's it, correct it, it actually kind of um outshines hail which chris looking at the image which I, I have up here on the screen in front of you that is a pretty accurate description there's this object right here and it's really bright and seems to be shining over hail in a way but we already debunked this didn't we didn't we say we looked at the star chart and there is a star there so this is a different one Oh, the, the is, one so that we had the, yeah. the comet has moved since these pictures have taken. Yeah, uh, the, the comet okay. is going to change its orientation to stars like every 10 minutes because right. of how quickly it's moving. Right. So what we're seeing here is different from Chuck Schrammick's picture because Chuck Schrammick has oh. the, uh, the Saturn like object picture. This yes. one, there is no star here. Right. So this can only be an object that is traveling with hail pop. So wait, in if reality, in actual reality, there is no star in this region of the sky in real life. Yep. So there is an object behind hail Bob. According to this image. According to this image. Okay, mm-hmm. got it. And we will find out the source of this image on the next episode, but okay. that's where we're at right now. Is right. Art and Courtney both have this image. No one else can see it because it's right. super top secret. Otherwise, yeah. the guy would be out of it. 
Now, another interesting thing that they have been able to deduce from all of the science that everyone's doing on this object, since everyone knows about it, is that this object has to be hollow, Chris. There's no other explanation for how it's traveling. Really? Mm -hmm. I got to hear why, why it has to be hollow. One would think, well, if it's truly larger than the Earth, wouldn't the comet be orbiting it? Mm -hmm. And that brings us to the idea that it is most likely hollow. hollow. Therefore, the mass is low. So you, you conclude that because it is not. Uh, otherwise, the comet would indeed, uh, because of the um, uh, gravitic uh, attraction, it would, it would either consume it or, or orbit it. Exactly. Uh, you have had many hours of discussion with this professor, haven't you? Yes, I have. How convinced is he that this is not ambiguous? He is very convinced. He's completely convinced. Um, when we first started talking with him, he thought that there was the possibility mm -hmm. that this was some type of um, artificial object, but he wasn't committing himself at that point. And then apparently he received some confirmation from other people in his field that have seen the same things. And uh, one particular colleague of his who has um, detected radio signals from this object. Here's our radio signals, dude. Yes. Yeah, dude. Right. So it's hollow, number one, because otherwise hale -Bopp would be orbiting it. And then number two, right. it's putting off signals of some sort. Yes. Um, an important that was actually. That was actually a pretty thought out explanation as to why they thought it was hollow. Actually, pretty impressive. I didn't even consider the the mass idea. Like if this thing was that large, right? It would have it would have gravity. Mm -hmm. And it, if it was bigger than Hale Bop, then the then it would be like orbiting this object. Yep, very true. Um that's good I stuff, dude. Another important call out here is that on this episode, Prudence is saying that she has spent hours talking to this guy. So just yes. keep that in the back of your mind for next episode, because uh, that will come up later. Right, right. So you said that this astronomer who reaches out to them is a real astronomer. This is a real person. Somebody is actually talking to them. Uh, according to them, it is. According to them. So... Other than the pictures and what they're saying, Art has no evidence that this astronomer is real. Zero evidence. Zero evidence other than the picture. Then one picture that he was sent. That is the only evidence he has to back any of this up. And the claims made by Courtney and Prudence. Yeah. And you have one amateur astronomer who said he saw right. Saturn. Who said there is something there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's keep going. Yeah. So number one, Chris, we got a radio signal. What kind of radio signal? Do you know anything about the nature of the radio signal? Now, all that I know is that it has some type of complicated pattern to it. And that would lend one to think that it is some type of intelligent signal. Now, there are some astronomical objects that do give off patterned radio signals. Um, pulsars, quasars, that kind of thing. Sure. But, uh, but this pattern apparently is very complex and so it it seems to rule out some type of natural natural means and Nobody, they're working on decoding it they don't know what it that means. was my next question so it's encrypted and it confirms what the remote viewer saw mm -hmm. that they were trying to give us information 100 percent accuracy rate and we it, we are going to have to decode it somehow because it's very complex. Yeah. So I guess the obelisk that is going to bring us knowledge is coming in the form of radio signals is kind of what I'm getting from this. I listen, the radio signals have been going throughout the universe for billions of years. So that you use radio waves wouldn't be that shocking to me. Now, the, the other important call out here is that they are refusing to say what frequencies these signals are coming on. So ah, no one can independently confirm this because right. they don't know what frequency it, it, right. they should be looking at to catch this radio signal. Well, and you would have to be pointing it right at the hale Bop comet, right? Yeah. I, I kind of really like that, to be honest. So we're mm -hmm. getting this. We're getting blasted with radio signals. And here... The the Galactic Federation would know that we 
have radio signal capabilities. Yeah, they, they'd be able to catch that. You know, they've probably even heard like our 1950s, 1940s recordings. You know, like one, I, I believe the very first recording that was was sent out that they would hear is actually as one of the speeches by Hitler in the 30s. Is that one of the first radio? That would be that one out? of the first things. That oh, my God. Hear. OK, maybe maybe they are here to blow us up. <laughs> they might be. Hey, like this is God. Me. Something's That's gone one wrong of the on first Earth. things that humanity. One of the first things that humanity shares is a Hitler speech. Bad vibes immediately coming from the planet. Good. Not, Not good, dude. Good. But they would understand yeah. that for you know a couple of decades we've been able to to send and receive radio signals, and so it'd be a natural thing for them to use to communicate with us. Yeah. But at this point, we don't have any actual evidence of the radio signal. Um, all we have is one photograph, right? So Art's question is, if this professor, this, this astronomer does not come forward, are you going to release the photographs? If in a reasonable time, you have the photographs, I've got them, uh, Professor Brown has them, uh, Whitley Strieber has them. If within a reasonable time, there is not a news conference, would you release these photos? We have given this astronomer our word that we would not release the photos at this time. Um, we will be in contact with him after this show, and we'll, we'll check his reaction to all this and to see um, what kind of decisions he's come to. And then I guess we'll reevaluate um, right. depending on what he plans on doing. All but right. I, I can't answer that at this time. All right. Now, remember here, Chris, this is November 28th of 1996. The anticipated timeline for him coming out with the conference uh, to discuss these photographs was about one week. He wanted the weekend to talk with his family first before he blew up their lives. Right. So that's the right. Point. But but they're claiming this guy is thinking about doing a press conference. That's the plan. He's planning doing a press conference. He just wants to talk to his family first, talk to a couple colleagues, make sure he's got you know, all the data stitched up real good so that right. can come at them. Um, which well, you know, this is a huge, this is a huge yeah. thing, right? That's like to, to, to tell everyone, Hey, we're pretty sure that there's alien life behind this hail bot comet. That's a, that's a very big statement to make. Yeah. That's a big one. That's a big career move for sure. Yeah. Um, that, that has global and historical implications that you probably shouldn't make on a whim. Yeah. So you I'll know, give them. I'll give him a week. Give him the week. Give him the week. Okay. Now, jumping forward in time, Chris, from November 28th to December 6th of 1996. The, we're going this, to a new episode. We're going to a brand new episode now. Okay. It has been over a week. The guy still hasn't come out. Hasn't said anything to anyone. Said anything. Straight crickets. So with the crickets, though, Art Bell does not stop reporting on this. Right. So he brings on Whitley Strieber, our good friend who wrote communion about his alien abductions and yes. Chuck Schrammick, the amateur astronomer who took the initial photograph that said interesting, all of this. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. What an interesting duo to choose. I think it was just like, let's mix and match. Right. We had Prudence right. and Whitley on now. The, now they're having Whitley and Schrammick on. It's like, get all the homies together, but you don't right. want to get stale. You right. Different right. Ones on. And he's, and again, like we said, like for whatever reason, art is, is, is sold by this story fully in. And once again, the only evidence, the only hard evidence here is one photograph that was sent to art. Yeah. Right. Right. So we got the, well, we got, we got Chuck's photo and we have random top 10 university astronomers photo. Allegedly random top 10 university. Right, alleged. Photo. You're right. I should have started with alleged. Yeah. And I'm not even going to give Chuck's photo to art at this point, because by this date, that has been thoroughly debunked by the media who has said that this is not really. Me. Yeah. They immediately all, like astronomers can just look at stuff and just know what's going on. Apparently right. they're like, nah, dog, there's a star there. Yeah. And it's been all over the media saying there's a star there. This is not what he's saying it is. So, so Chuck's already been debunked. And not just us, like other yeah. people have said this guy, like it's a it's a great photo of Hale Bop, but like there's a star there. Sorry, bro. 
Yeah, sorry. Okay. So we got Whitley and Stramick on, and they're actually on at the same time. So they're just chatting with each other. Okay. And one of the big things they're getting at is because the media has been debunking uh, Stramick's photo, they're immediately going to start hating on the media. All of the publicity surrounding uh, Hale-Bopp since your images, every story that has come out uh, literally in uh, newspapers from Albuquerque to Phoenix to San Jose to you name it, uh, an Associated Press story, um, MSNBC did a front page story on it and so forth and so on. They all uh, try to take it on by referring only to your photograph. The release. One picture. One, That's the key. The one picture. Here's an amateur astronomer with a very legitimate and straightforward discovery who finds instead that the whole that 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 that, that he's he's they're they're all throwing dynamite at him for no apparent reason. It must be a very weird experience. It, it, it is. I'm I'm to the point now where I'm just kind of sitting back and enjoying it. And to be fair, we have seen this from the media where. Uh, you know, you're kind of just Joe Blow at one minute, and then the next minute you're an international sensation or international, you know, infamy for for just like a minor occurrence that that probably happens hundreds of times a day. You just got caught, photographed, or or recorded. Yeah, the only difference here is that this guy came out. He sold it, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, hundred percent. Like yeah. he he well. But again, he probably was like, yeah, I'll go on Coast to Coast AM, not thinking that it was going to be international news. I think that's fair. I think he was just going on Coast, uh, and he wasn't expecting his whole life to blow up, but it, it did a, a bit, right? Where right. he was suddenly on the cover of, not on the cover of papers, but there were stories about his photograph in major news outlets. Right, uh, and which, now people yeah. are, like, digging up into his life. He's probably... You know, probably reporters are coming up to him, maybe. And like, it probably was kind of brutal there for a little bit. Yeah, it probably wasn't fun. And the thing that he keeps talking about, too, is all these debunkers who are after him. But he's standing by the photo. I, 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 I think even your photograph uh, is not e that easily debunked. But when you're talking to a newspaper, it is easily debunked. They just say, sure. oh, it was a star. Oh, yeah, sure they're, they not call... there, they're not there to pet to to to. Uh to uh, deliver the facts, they're there to debunk. So if you come up with a, with a good explanation for whatever debunking method they've chosen, then they're simply going to choose another. What you're saying is the community has been trying to blind us to the actual appearance of this comet. Oh, absolutely. And I, I think combined, you know, in my mind, the, the other major factor, I, I smelled a cover-up before any of this started. And was was wondering and wondering aloud, where are the good pictures? Well, and even for the example, Hubble the pictures. Hubble has imaged this uh, a number of times. They're supposed to have imaged it in 1996, but practically nothing has been released. Actually, I think uh, nothing since uh, what uh, October, Chuck. Well, they have put up some new ones, but they've obviously <laughs> uh, jacked down the resolution, uh, zoomed out on them. Dude, this is, there's a lot of weird parallels to this, like, what was then would have been fringe. Like, this is things that you talk about on conspiracy radio, coast to coast AM at 2 AM in the morning. But now we have these conversations about misinformation and information czars and like Facebook and Twitter saying like, this may be a lie or this is state media or whatever it is. Right. Like this is all coming into fruition now. Well, but here's, here's the thing about this, right. Is they are starting to weave a new conspiracy. Right. During the drought of information, because right. we had this rush of data, you know, quote unquote data where we had the, the one picture from Shramick, we had uh, Prudence and Courtney coming on and saying we got new pictures from an astronomer and then nothing. Right. For over a week, right? Right. And he's still talking about it. So if it's this obvious of something that's occurring, it has to be a conspiracy. And now they're just yes. starting to weave it all together. Like yes. they know it's there. They're not putting pictures out because they're trying to hide it. They're coming after me because I'm over the target, man, because I know what it is. And they know I know what it is. And they don't want me to know what it is. And I smelled a cover up weeks ago. We, the moment I heard about Hale Bob, I was like, they're going to cover this up. And it's only been confirmed over the weeks. Mm -hmm. This is definitely a cover up. Yeah. So we got the conspiracy growing. 
Uh, And then we we take a caller, man. We take a caller who says, you know, hey, what do you think the thing is? Because we're having a lot of speculation. But, like, what is the object behind Hitler? Now, there are a lot of people out there who say, who knows what the hell this thing is. But do you have anything? Do you, do you, what do you think this thing is? All right, that's a straight out question. Uh, Whitley, what do you think it is? Hunches. That's what I can give you at this point. I cannot tell you what it is. I cannot make any... Definitive any statements. Definitive statements. What do you think? Obviously. I have a hunch that this does have something to do with the whole gamut of strange uh, things that we have been observing over the past 50 years, from UFOs to close encounters to crop circles and any number of other different anomalous things that appear to be an attempt on the part of, of an intelligence that is very, very different from ours in many respects to communicate with us. Paul, I, this may be a question that may be impossible to answer, but just after listening so much about this comment, about this potential object about comment, Art's Down done multiple episodes about it. You you have international press going about amateur astronomer who goes on coast to coast AM and it's it's now news stories that this guy was had to be debunked. What is it about this comment that is is sending the world into like this crazy place? Like so this is I, kind of insane. I think that this is just something that happens with comets because okay. when Hale Bomb was discovered, the first thing the astronomer said was, "We better get ready for some suicides," because for some reason. Whenever there's a comet in the sky, people just start killing themselves. And, you know, obviously really? that happens with Heaven's Gate, but I think it's it just starts melting people's brains to have this giant object in the sky that we can now see. And it's disturbing in a way. And I think right. in olden times, we would make up a lot of stories around why it was happening. Maybe the gods were angry or something like well, that. Well, they're bad omens almost yeah. always. Yeah, but I I think it disturbs us like to our core. I think it's the right. lizard brain portion of us yeah, that starts dude. to go crazy. Well, like eclipses and and stuff like that, right? I mean, that drives me crazy. Well, and that's the thing is that human brains are designed to catch things that are wrong or off. So when there is right. a change in our environment, we find it disturbing. So like when yeah. the pressure drops, you know, we can feel it in our bones and we know there's right. going to be a storm and we start getting uncomfortable. And I think it's similar to an eclipse or a comet. This isn't something that's supposed to happen. This is outside of the norm. And right. I'm fearful of it in a way. And it just becomes it's, it is truly a global phenomenon because yeah. almost all co- cultures have that reaction to things that are happening up in space. I mm. mean. Uh, the 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 human connection to space i truly believe is is older than just humanity itself i think neanderthals had it i think homo erectus had it and you just you go back into where we start really getting consciousness i bet you know even animals get weird in eclipses mm-hmm. so this 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 is something that we have been dealing with for millennia yeah and we would be you're totally right we would be it's 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 in our dna at this point yeah yeah like things happening in space can be super bad for us yeah and that may be part of why art has bought into this just hook line and sinker man he is doubling down night after night on this being a thing when really he doesn't have much to stand on yeah which is unlike him, though. You know, it, it, it's like we said before. I think the first episode that we covered, I think that was par for the course, right? Right. Like, okay, we got a remote viewer saying there's aliens, you know, behind Hillbop, whatever. Right. It's it's him buying into Courtney Brown's shit about there being a professor who has all this data and it's all super real. That's where right. he really stepped in a big pile of dog duty. Yeah. Which is and, funny because we have we have seen Art yell at people who didn't yeah. have enough proof. Yeah. And I really do think that it has to do 
with the prestige of him being a tenured professor at a respected university. It could be. It, that could have been enough for him to say, you know what, this is all legitimate. Right. And he okay. goes so far, Chris, as to compare this to Galileo. <laughs> Let's go. When you begin to challenge a set of beliefs that people have built their identity on, you are basically challenging their religious dogma. Ask Galileo. Uh, what do you think about that, Whitley? Well, they, they nearly lit Galileo up, and I think you and I and people like us are very fortunate that burning of the, at the stake is going out of fashion. Yeah, we'd all already be we'd, uh, we'd charcoal. Already be absolutely, we'd be toast. Here's the thing: he's not wrong. I mean, the person who gives humanity first contact, like like Art put in his in that 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 crazy opener, that is going to be insane. That is going. There's going to be whole new religions that pop up overnight to deal with an alien species coming up to us. It will definitely break our brains. And I think more than more than Galileo would have, because it's going to be known almost instantly throughout the planet. Mm -hmm. Once we have actual confirmation, if we have actual first contact and this thing is recorded, it's everyone's going to know it almost immediately. Well, it's like, all going to be live a, streams. Right. It, it'll, it'll, Galileo was a slow trickle. And, yeah. you know, there there had been talk before of heliocentric solar system. But nobody that wasn't going to be widely disseminated information. So uh, I I'm not going to to fault him too much. Like if this was true, yeah, it would have been Galilean for sure. Yeah, yeah, could could have been. Uh, Chris, that will conclude today's recordings. Okay, and we will pick back up next episode where we're going to find out that this was not Galilean at all. This wasn't um, Galilean. It was all fake. It was all really, really <laughs> fake. <laughs> None of this is real. Thank you for, for, you know, you gave a couple of hints that, that, you know, the, the, the amount of times you said allegedly should have really uh, foreshadowed to most of our listeners that all of this is, is fake, but it is very funny just to hear like all of it's a lie. Oh, all completely, completely false. Uh, and for part three, we are going to listen to Art Bell have a showdown with Courtney Brown over the fact that this is all made up. Uh, and we're also going to get more into Heaven's Gate and specifically what they believed, why they believed it, and whether or not Art Bell's coverage had an impact on their suicide in March of 97. This is, I mean, it really is starting to make a, a lot more sense to me. I think we have unpacked a lot of really great stuff already and i hope that it, it will help us make some really good judgment calls on whether or not art bell has any responsibility for this suicide that that is the hope right um and that's yeah. what i was hoping to do so hopefully we we did a decent job of that and giving an overview of of what the coverage was yeah. uh and what i'm really excited about for next episode is that we have reached out directly to heaven's gate cult former members uh, who have given us their input on on their thoughts on our bill so we'll get to hear from them directly as well we shouldn't call it a cult we should call it a religious movement <laughs> is that what we should do <laughs> uh they just refer to themselves as the group uh the group? So we, we okay. can just call them the group we we'll call them the group then yeah but that will conclude today's episode chris on a scale of one to five hail bop comments where are you at right now on this story so before you said it was all fake I'm still at like a three or a four easy, dude. I mean, I can see where art does take this hook, line and seeker. He is getting multiple people confirming things for him, even though to us now looking back at it, we can kind of see that what was happening is that they're all just like self confirming their own stories. Mm hmm. No one, no one is coming up with anything tangential other than saying, yes, I believe everything this person is saying, and let me tell you some more. 
yeah. then the other person's like, oh, shit, I like that. Let me take that, too. And they're just you know, we're, like we said, dude, conspiracy theory is a form of yes. And you say something. I agree with you. You add it. It, 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 it enhances the lore. And just like any meme out there, the enhancing of the meme goes through multiple stages, right? Some things are going to be added and they don't catch on, but some things are going to add and enhance and let the meme build. And we are, this meme is building and art is giving it life. Mm -hmm. So I'm dude, I'm, I can't wait. I can't wait to find out more. I can't it's, wait to yeah. listen. I can't wait to listen to Whitley get smacked by art because here's the thing. Art really does the best smacking. And when he is ticked, when he is unconvinced, I can only imagine what he's like when he's betrayed. Mm -hmm. And when he feels like he's been lying to his audience because he does have this weird dichotomy where he does know it's entertainment, but I think he truly cares about the audience and, and he doesn't like giving them open face lies. Yep. Yep. Which is basically what this was. And once again, I'm not going to rate it because uh, I'm, I'm going to save my rating for the ending, but I yep. think art has really screwed up here because right. he is basing all of this off of one image that a political science professor has sent him. Right. And if, if he was going to keep this close to the chest, he should have reached out to someone to validate this or ask, you know, you need right. to put me in contact with this guy. I promise I'm not going to share his information. I need to talk to him directly. Or he should have sent it to an astronomer at some university and said, you can't share this. This is confidential, but I need you to validate that this picture yeah. and this image is real because right. he is basing months of coverage off of one picture that he has no independent confirm confirmation right. is accurate right. anyway. And I think that is a dereliction of duty. Yeah. Definitely when you have did. 10 million listeners who are gobbling this up and you're going to choose to cover it day after day, verify it independently. Yeah. Right. And yeah. He didn't go. Do that. Yeah. He, yeah. He was just, he was for whatever reason, dude, he was just hook. He took this hook, line and sinker and you really do hear it. And he, he gets excited in a lot of those clips. Yeah. He's he very excited about this stuff. Well, because I think it's finally the thing, you know, he's been right. doing this forever. And I think Art Bell very much, I mean, obviously he wants to entertain, but I think he also wants to believe, you know, yeah. in the end. And he and believed think, it, yeah. dude. He believed, he believed it. it. And like you said, dude, comets and asteroids and stuff in our periphery messes with the like psychic nature of humanity. Mm -hmm. And I bet, because I don't think, the that heaven's gate was the only i believe they call them millenna millenarianism or something like that when you're with like death cults i don't yeah. think they were the only one when hell bop showed up no they definitely weren't because it was also the turn of the century so there right. were a lot of millenarian cults that were popping up around that's this time yeah exactly but they were the weirdest and there's also videotape of their bodies so that's right. kind of what yeah. led to it um blowing up but we're gonna get all into that next week chris this has been coast to coast pm uh check out our feed next thursday for part three the final part of the heaven's gates hail bop art bell fiasco all conspiracy all the time later <laughs>